Welcome to the second episode of Series 9, everyone. We'll be finishing our amazing characters for Spire with Grant Howitt in just a moment, but first some announcements as normal. If you are not on our Discord server, you are missing out on some great character creation discussions, especially those surrounding our weekly character creation prompts on Twitter. You also would normally catch me talking about the development of my own game in real time, which has been a lot of fun, and I've been getting in a lot of really great input from you guys. So come on down, join us uh, at discord.charactercreationcast.com. We also have an entire room devoted to swearing, just for me. So it's true. if you want to come hang out in Amelia's swear room, because <laughs> Ryan has quarantined me. Yes. I, have, I have one channel. <laughs> hey, it's a fantastic channel, and I frequent it's, it. It's where all the best conversation happens, because it's my it's channel. It's very true. <laughs> <laughs> also, a reminder to everybody that the Strata Kickstarter is right around the corner, so we're definitely going to signal boost the launch of that when it happens. You can keep an eye out in the show notes and on our Twitter account for a link to that. Hopefully, very soon, um, according to Grant, like week after next, maybe. So I'm very excited about it. And if you are enjoying these episodes and Spire sounds like a cool game to you, definitely you'll have to pay attention and check it out. Especially for the fashion section. Especially for the fashion section inspired by Character Creation Cast. It's very true. And hey, it turns out that last week's episode was our six month anniversary that I heard uh, Miss Amelia over there talk about. And I happen to miss the announcements because of family reasons. But I can't believe it's been half a year already. And I have to say the response to our regular series episodes, and especially our character evolution cast episodes, has been way more than I ever imagined. I am really happy to have all of you along for this amazing ride with us. And I am just so happy that I get to experience this roller coaster. With such an amazing co-host. Aw, thank you. I like the yeah. roller coaster part. Like, some parts of me are good and some parts of me are bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly been an up roller coaster. We haven't gone back down yet. It's hopefully, tr- hopefully up eternally. I'm thinking more excitement-wise, but... I don't know, but has it not been exciting? It's been very right. exciting. Right, roller coasters go up and down, Ryan. I don't know what yeah, you're talking about. Down, I don't know what kind of roller coaster you're on, but... <laughs> My analogies are perfect. <laughs> Don't correct me. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of compliments, <laughs> um, we have a review to read. If you would like to leave us a review, please do. We have very few left, and it's just not mm-hmm. as good without them. Uh, you can easily follow one of the links in our show notes to our iTunes page, our Stitcher page, or, like this one, you can read it from our Facebook page. I'm trying to not butcher this name, so Stephen, I'm really sorry if I get it wrong. It's a one-shot tradition. (laughs) So this one is from Stephen Kitely on Facebook, and he said, This has become my favorite RPG review podcast. I love how the simple, and not so, active character creation has been used to really get into the bones of RPG systems in a really fun way. I love hearing how the hosts and their guests come up with character concepts and seeing them flesh out on each episode. The system variety has been fantastic so far. Please keep them coming. Thank you so much, Stephen. That was a a really great review. Yes, thank you so much. We're glad you're enjoying it. We have, we do, Mm -hmm. we promise we have so much more to come. We have a very long list. (laughs) Oh my goodness, yes we do. (laughs) All right, with all of that out of the way, let's get to the episode. Yeah, enjoy. Last time on Character Creation Cast, we were just starting to create our characters for Spire with Grant Howitt, one of the main designers of the game. Grant was busy working on a dutiful knight. Amelia was working on a devout carrion priest. And I was working on a vigilante bound. 
We'll be picking up right where we left off from last time, right now. Enjoy. Uh, my other core ability is Bound Blade. I, I really like this one. Uh, you have captured a god and forced it into your blade. As a bound, you gain a god knife or god axe, so I chose the knife, when you join the order and bind a small god inside it with a bloody and dark ritual. That's just hardcore. It's pretty metal. Yeah. It's so cool. It's So oh. I, w- I, would like, I would like you, I'm not the GM here, but I would like you to name your god and what it's the god of. Oh, all these names. Uh, I think like we've uh, so in in my current campaign, the bound has she she has an axe with the god of cicadas in it, okay. and so when, whenever she takes it out, just the sound of cicadas gets louder and louder. Oh, that's so good! It's pretty cool, right? <laughs> it's really good. Ryan hates when we make him name name things, though. Oh, okay. Previously, uh, I well, made him name his it's, guns it's not and that his I hate horse, it. and <laughs> it's not that I hate it. It's just a running gag, apparently. Well, <laughs> d- don't worry about naming it then, but I would like to know what, will, what it's the god of. I No, I, I see it as a challenge. It will happen. Mm. Um, just or maybe just be a bunch of ghosts. You know, it, it, it Part is... Part of a, an angel. It's a knife. Okay. God knife. And so basically, name the knife or and or the god or... Um, tell us what the god does. Okay. Tell us what it was a god of before now it's become a god of this knife. Ooh. ooh. Okay. Okay, I almost have something. I'll get back to you. Brilliant. (laughs) We'll check in later. Yes. Ryan, did you pick your Durance? Oh, yes, I did. Oh, I haven't picked one. What what, what have you picked for your Durance, Ryan? Oh, okay. I went with Killer. Ryan! Yeah. (gasps) So uh, it gives my character sneak and fight. What a twist. I know. You're a sneaky, fighty character. <laughs> I know. Uh, so, so if I understand that correctly, uh, since I get sneak and fight already with the uh, the bound class, that gives me a knack in sneaking yeah. and fighting, right? Yes, that gives you two knacks. Oh, beautiful. Um, my favorite sneak uh, knack is lying in wait. Ooh, very cool. Uh, so basically, this this means that I murdered the enemies of my lord in cold blood strangling them with their silken bedsheets, pushing them off gilded balconies, or shooting them in the street. So I have an aptitude for death and going unseen. You sound like a nice guy. Yeah. Ryan, did we break you last time? Uh. <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> you always play a nice character, and now... Um, know, we, this we character... Made you be a jerk one time. Yeah, I, I'm thinking this character is somebody that was... Uh, she had a quote knack for um, killing, and that's just what her lord had given her tasks to do. Okay, and she hated it, but she did it because she's good at it, and she knows to uh, not. You know, she knew back then not to fight the the power because that gets you killed. Because that's what she was doing, killing people that fought the power. <sighs> Ryan, so so eventually, I got out of that. So that's why I chose Killer and Vigilante slash The Bound. So I want to take Personal Assistant um, from Endurance because I want something that this character could not possibly have been good at. <laughs> <laughs> like the most awkward, uncomfortable Personal Assistant who will like stare you down. <laughs> <laughs> Just eating all the receipts. Yes, <laughs> it's funny. I, I, and, and like, and like, they were so bad at the job that they ended up joining a death cult on the very top of Spire. <laughs> right, exactly. That's funny because I was, I, I was between that one and Killer, <laughs> personal assistant or Killer. It's, <laughs> yeah. You know what? Having been a receptionist for a long time, it makes you want to be a killer. Mm. Well, hey, I will say that. Um, I'm going to go for enlisted as my um, as my background as my durance. Uh, so I served in the armed forces as a soldier. Uh, that gives me the it gives me extra a plus two blood, which gives me a beefy three blood slots, which stacks with my three armor. So if anyone feels like if anyone feels like shooting me in the chest, it's absolutely fine. <laughs> uh, it also gives me a it also gives me the fight skill, which I already had. So I've taken the fight knack, lead the charge. I'm seeing him as kind of a squad leader or a sergeant, certainly uh, someone who is a man of the people. So where are these knacks listed? Oh, you got to make them up. Oh, you just make them up. Make them up. Yeah, it's like a specialty oh. in Mold of Darkness. You, oh. uh, you, you have a, a specific instance of the skill or domain. Uh, there are some examples on page. Bird of a. 
Age 18. 18. 18. Yeah, okay. 18 for those reading at home. Sample next. Okay. Interesting. So it's just, hey, this sounds like something sneaky. So therefore, yes, that's my knack. Yeah, for sure. And it's like, don't don't be cheeky with it. Like, th- don't take the sneak knack, avoiding detection. That's sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Although World of Darkness did have the sub- subterfuge specialty, lying, which I felt was maybe power gaming a little bit. Oh. It's like having the brawl specialty doing harm. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Hmm. Now, okay, so I'm I'm going with the enlisted as an extra advance as well. So that means that I can uh, choose powers which I learned during my time in the army. And there's some interesting stuff with this. Um, an awful lot of it revolving around having the uh, high elves uh, sung a mimetic virus poem into my brain, making me a conduit for, for demonic magic. I'm not going to go for that so much at the moment. <laughs> that feels like something which I want to discover throughout the entire campaign. But I'm looking at either squad leader, that gives me the compel skill, and order domain. And so order is like military, police, any, any sort of governmental organization which keeps the peace. Um, and Or keep moving, which lets me buff all of you. Uh, me and any nearby allies ignore the effects of minor fallout until the end of the situation if I mark D3 stress as I keep, keep people moving. I think that's a bit more exciting. Hmm. I can see that coming in handy. Yeah, definitely. All right, I'll go for that. Okay, so you said that I get two knacks. Is that two per skill or one one fight and one stealth? Uh, one fight and one stealth. All right. I really like the advances for this class. They're so horrible. They they yeah. There's some they're there's some grimy dark. stuff in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm here for it. I'm. I think my favorite one is when is is when you eat someone and you get one of their domains. Oh my goodness. Like they, like it's it's like it's I think it's a high advance, but you eat someone and then you permanently inherit their domain. So like you can have all the domains as long as you can track down people who know them. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Or you can uh, turn into a hyena. There's that, you know. So yeah, I mean, yeah. oh my goodness. Either way, no, this game's real good, Ryan. <laughs> it's real good. It's not. I feel like it's not a Ryan game. <laughs> no, this does not, this sounds amazing. Like I, I okay. Uh, if you don't know, I, I'm. Mr. Goody Two Shoes, for the most part, you, you, um, you definitely seem like a nice person. But like this, like weird darkness is compelling to me. Um, <laughs> I'm drawn in by the darkness. I am. I think because it's not like outright like murder violence. It's like uh-huh. grim. Yes. And, and like I- kind of creepy. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Like I, I, I would say it was murder violence, but it's not. We don't want to glorify it. Mm-hmm. We don't want to. We, right. We, we don't want to be like. It's like if you get a headshot, well done, you've killed the person. But it's not like, yeah, cool headshot. It's like, oh god, I just killed a person. They had kids. That sort of thing. Yeah. No. There's definitely a lot of like consequences around it, and mm. I feel like there's enough in the setting to. I don't want to say justify it because that feels creepy, but like. Well, I mean, that's to the, make that's it the, clear that's the why point of the game. That's you know. <laughs> to like, yeah, justify is. Um, I think possibly the best word, even if you don't wish to use it, because it's. I, how about rationalize after the fact? Yes, yeah, yeah, that's fair. I just remember from my terrorism and counterterrorism class when I was going through my political science degree, the, okay. the argument of what is a freedom fighter versus what is a terrorist? They're the same mm. thing. Mm. And I keep going back to that, like, mm, they're the same thing. <laughs> the, uh, so, um, Chad Whether they're on Walker. your side or you're not. <laughs> Chad Walker, who wrote Cryptomancer, it's an excellent game about um, uh, information technology and security in a fantasy age. Uh, he did he did a source book for us um, called Secrets Kept from the Sun, which is quite a short, basically an essay about um, using information uh, security and counterintelligence in Spire. Uh, and he, I, I was asking people for quotes for the Strata Kickstarter, and he said, "Can I say something about the game that probably won't sell copies?" I'm like, "Well, okay, sure." And he was, and he. His quote was, Spire is a game of insurrection against an entrenched colonial force. However, the player characters are not are not the rebellion. They're closer to Hezbollah. And Oof. like, yeah, I guess, I guess that's right. Yes, I mean, technically it's true. I mean, having yeah. come, just recently come off a Knights Black Agents game yes. where I played XIRA, like, mm. it's fine. I'm here for it. But <laughs> yeah. like, it's- I just keep going back to them. I'm like, mm. I think I think it's it's interesting it's interesting to play in that space as well because it is fantasy and it is 
um, there is an element of being able to distance yourself from it. And it's not like it's not like the game set in America, as it were. Like it's very far away from from mm-hmm. what's from what's real. But I think it gives you a chance to safely play in those spaces and explore some of those emotions and some of the stories which we want to tell about that. Yeah, Which really is, cool. yeah, I mean, that's a thing that I've always loved about role-playing games is that they mm, offer that sure. opportunity to kind of explore those things that you're not really allowed to do in real life. Um, mm. Like be a terrorist or just, you now, know, like, or really just sort of rise up against a yes. sort of fascist or authoritarian well, so, I have it work. leadership. Yeah. Not great, now, maybe. Th- this is but... all very serious. Should I have a boat? Yes. You have One of my powers gives me a boat. I mean, so are there other choices aside from boat, or is that just like well, the I mean, choices have a boat or don't? Uh, I get plus three reputation, and I'm promoted to the rank of admiral, and I get a rowboat. Wow! Well, um, yes. an admiral with a rowboat. I'm Admiral of the Robo. Um, so basically, uh, one of the builds you can have of knight is what we call rep tank. Uh, where you put all of your points into reputation, and there's a mid, there's mid range power for the knights called "Do you know who I am?" Which is once per situation when you take stress to any resistance other than reputation, allocate it to reputation, so you can go in and just posh your way through it. Oh, <laughs> which <I quite> like. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think the answer is always have a boat if you can yeah, have a one. A boat would be good, and like, and like that's that that does mean we have to put the campaign somewhere where rivers are. But I'm seeing like I, I could see a sort of North Dock sort of thing. I could see like um, whatever. I think there's definitely room for rivers in everywhere in Spire or canals. Oh, could, for sure. Yeah, or just you know, like kind of gross ponds. Yeah, for sure. Or uh, just like <laughs> a really greasy street. Does your boat have a name? Um, you do have to name it. It says in the book. Oh, in um, the rules. So its name is Mirabelle. Nice. A boat called Mirabel. Oh man, I got so much resistance. This is great. Also, I should know. I've never actually played Spies. This is quite exciting. Oh. <laughs> I've never had it's a the good game. To you should play. try it sometime. Yeah, I hear it's quite good. Um, no, we don't have an equipment box on the. Yes, we do. Here we are. We do. Um, rowboat. Ryan, did you pick your advances? Your low I've advances. Got, I've got the two low advances. I think. Uh, let me see. Oh, and that's right. And then we decided not one. What did you What did you tell us we could have? You, you can have a medium one as well. Ooh, yeah. I gotta read those now. Yeah. Okay. So for my low advances, I chose the secret of the crowd, uh, where I can hide in plain sight so long as there are others around. I gain plus one to shadow, and when I wear my mask and stand in a crowd, I will blend into the background. Uh, not becoming invisible unless I do something out of the ordinary to attract attention, which I think is very fitting for this type of character. And also, um, the secret of flight. The god bound to your blade can make it soar like an angel. Your blade gains the following takes, ranged, piercing, and reload. And when you reload, go and pick up your blade. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no is, that, is that just a joke or... Um, uh, no, that's it. Yeah, go go pick it up. Um, reload is more of a um, narrative concern. So basically, uh, rather than having hard rules for it, if you have a gun with a reload tag, the GM will remind you to reload, and then your and then your enemies will sort of flank around you or run at you or something along those okay. lines. So yeah, is that basically saying you're without the uh, the item, or it's basically useless until you, until you reload? Yeah, yeah, until you establish that in the fiction. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. And and obviously, it makes a lot of sense when you're throwing your knife at somebody. Mm. Okay, that's really cool. I like that. I'm trying to pick through the medium ones as well. Uh, for my medium one, I've gone for Armor Kenning, which is a fairly um, combat-y one. It's fairly... Um... There's not there's there's not a great deal of fluff attached to it, but I've already got a, quite a good um, picture of this of this character in my head. Basically, it increases my armor by one point, and because I know about armor, every attack I have ignores armor. So um, all all my attacks get the piercing tag. Nice. Well, it ignores most armor, but that's getting into yes. you know, silly. Yeah, ways. I think there was uh, an armor type that I saw that uh, prevented the the piercing. Implacable. Yes. Yeah. If you just cover yourself in boilerplate and stomp around, that's basically how you get it. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, uh, man. These medium ones are hard to choose from. 
should also note that uh, for the night, all of my high-level advances are mystical pub crawls. What uh, so, does that mean? So <laughs> you get a quest, and when you take on the quest, so like the quest are, for example, pull the sword from the stone, and the stone is a pub, uh, or slay the dragon, uh, which is the guardian of a pub, and you take or seek the grail, which is a pub, you uh, you take on the uh, the quest and you get like a, a little bit of power, and then you have to go and achieve this nightly quest. And the fun thing about knights is they start off as basically useless drunks, and all of the high advances kind of have them come good in a way so like um like they remake the north docks in their image or they find a sword which makes them the, like the true monarch of spire or that sort of thing mm-hmm. um but my my favorite one is when you when you seek the grail uh, is it seek the grail yes it's sorry it's it's slay the dragon uh, not only do you uh, remove one blood stress at the start of each situation but you can no longer die <laughs> And Chris made me take out the gag, which is your odds of being permanently trapped under something heavier than, than you can move have jumped to one in one. <laughs> he made me take out. <laughs> I love the idea of this very intense drinking game. Mm. This is like high stakes drinking games. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> so for my low advances, I want to pick Murder of Crows. Cool. Because there's nothing cooler than just summoning crows, because it's terrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I want to pick. Where did the other one go? I was like already, and then now I'm not. Yeah, yeah, I gotta go with this one for me. Me, me, me get this. Oh, I want to pick Charnel's Mark, um, which mark D6 stress to blood or mind to cast the spell on a target within sight. Uh, a rune dabbed in rapidly drying blood appears on their person until the end of the situation. You and all allies gain the brutal tag when you roll to inflict stress against them. Nice. And then I think for my medium one, I am going to take. Um, oh, where did it go? Um, I'm going to take Red Feast. Um, so you can transmute the flesh of sentient creatures into your own at a cost to your own sanity. When you eat the flesh of a person, refresh. You cannot use this action to remove mind stress. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to eat some pee. <laughs> you say it so, like, so nicely. So well, joyfully. You want to be, you wanna be jolly joyful. about it. I guess. I mean, if you're going to be eating people, you might as well be putting a smile on your face. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to do it, enjoy it, you know? Yeah, and, it, and they don't have to be dead. You just have to get, like, an arm off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like a bite. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> shh, shh, it's fine. Oh, goodness. I still have to figure out my knacks. Would you like a hand? Stealth and fight. Yeah, I I think I, I think I might because uh, having never played the game before, and this is literally my first experience mm. with it, um, I'm kind of finding it a little difficult to narrow it down. Yeah, no, and also like it's rare that you'd pick two knacks yeah. as, a, as a starting character, so that's, that's, that's entirely understandable. So what sort of murders did you do for your lord? Um... I'm thinking it's it's mainly dagger, uh, but also, um, I I kind of picture her as a sort of femme fatale sort of okay. deal, uh, where she she has I guess a knack of um, killing them after dropping their guard. Uh, I like it. Um, so um, your fight skill could be unarmed target. Your fight knack. Oh yeah, I like that. And then the other one, you need sneak? Stealth, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Or sneak, yeah. I called it stealth. Which... I mean, I feel like something about being able to blend in is probably... Do you blend in or do, or do you stand out? And it's like, wow, look at her. I think stand out. Mm. Um, at least when I don't have my mask on. I have I have an idea. Yeah. I'm not sure whether it works, but your sneak, your sneak skill could be, I'm just going to go powder my nose. <laughs> and so that knack applies when you sneak off for 30 seconds while some guy's drinking wine and putting grapes into his mouth. I really like that. There you go. I, yeah, okay. I like that flavor. Okay. The thing, it doesn't really matter if people, like, it's something which Fate Accelerated taught me. It doesn't matter if people abuse the rules as long as they're telling stories. Mm-hmm. And Fate Accelerated, the, the only reason the approaches are there are to make you act in a certain way, which is evocative and interesting. And I think that knacks and specialty should similarly do that. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I really like this. I think this is my first experience with uh, a game that has this sort of uh, theme to it. Because mm. I've never played Fate. 
I've heard some actual plays of it, uh, but, you know, you never really get the nitty-gritty rules when it comes to actual plays. Mm. Yeah, I like being able to kind of flavor those things that you're you're good at, and mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like it fleshes out your character, because you can say, like, this is a thing that this person is particularly good at in, in this way. Yeah. All right. I think I got my medium one. Let's hear it. I'm going to go with the Saint of Binding. And Sounds sexy. It is. It is. The, your bound, the, bound is, the Bound is quite a sexy class if you're into being <laughs> tied up or tying others up. That's true. Um, this one is your rope god dances and twists for you. Your rope. Sexy. Yeah. Your rope. See? Very sexy. Your rope animates as if of its own accord, tripping your enemies. It becomes a weapon with the following stats, damage D3 and stunning. And so, I just think that that just sounds really you, really... you you now both have a weapon which does that, so I can't wait until we meet our first sort of golden-armored paladin and you both just tie him up and smash him into the street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, like, in a sexy way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, he's one of the 60% of characters who is so kissable. That's, yeah. <laughs> His mask falls off and, oh, God, he's incredible. <laughs> So I think I've sorted everything out. Um, I've got Keep Moving, which which lets, lets me buff all of you, basically, so you can ignore my in a fallout. Knight Admiral, which gives me the robo Mirabel and some more reputation. And Armor Kenning, which improves my armor and basically ruins everyone else's. Um, I have more resistances. I have more free slots and resistances than I know what to do with. So that's rather exciting. And also, in terms of my bonds, um, we each have one PC bond between us. Uh, mm -hmm. My NPC bond uh, is my Squire. Uh, Fenchurch, who's a dour-faced drow who served after me in the army. Nice. Oh, I have to name three NPCs? This is like, ev eventually. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't worry about it. We'll do it as they come up in the inverted commas game. <laughs> this is really interesting. I'm, I'm still trying to... Okay, I think for the god of my knife. Mm. Um, And do I have to do god of ropes now that I've got a... Uh, the the god of ropes is just a god that lives in your rope. It's a bit like uh, Shinto. There's a spirit living in your rope. Oh, okay, you, okay, you okay. Worship as a god. That makes uh, sense. The one on your knife you put there. Okay, so this one is going to be the god of assassins because uh -huh. she is sick and tired of people ordering her to do the killing. She wants to do it on her own terms and if okay. necessary. So she. So like, so like she's she's a rebellious god of killing for money. Yeah. Oh, I like that. That's kind of fun. So, what's a good god of assassins name? Nocturne. Ooh. It's a bit. It's a bit. It's a bit first choice. So it's it's a bit first idea. Um, stiletto. <laughs> Super sexy. That's correct. Hmm. Oh, I'm gonna have to name this hyena too. Hemlock. I wanna... Oh yeah, like. Like, um, name, naming our hyena is the best part of playing any carrion priest because generally you just give them a rank in the church. Really? Well, yeah, really? Like, I've, I've had I've had like bishop. Um, we've had bishop. We had um, sacred was another was another hyena. I think like giving them a completely incongruous name is perfect. I mean, I feel like in that case, obviously his name is Monsignor. <laughs> oh, I like it. Cardinal is another good name for a hyena. But yeah, Mon Monsignor, I like it. Or Basilica. What's a good uh, What's a good Shakespeare character name? Prospero. Prospero. I like that one. I was thinking because uh, Shakespeare invented the word assassins, didn't he? I don't know. I, I thought it, I thought it came from Hashashin. Um, it's an, Ara an Arabic I, word. I think he, if I remember correctly, he was the first one to use it um, in English. Anglified it, yes. Yeah. He he returned the word to his proper home in the English language. <laughs> <laughs> Just like all of those Greek antiquities we have yeah. in London. So I'm going to go with Prospero, the god of assassins, is bound in my god okay. life. Which is kind of cool because Prospero, Prosperous, and we're fighting against Prosperous people. Ah, oh, it's got a double the meaning. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down, man. It's only 2 a.m. for me. I can't keep up. <laughs> okay. And I do have a bond as well with an NPC. Yes. Um, you have an individual level bond with a member of the downtrodden underclass. Name them and name the thing that's most important to them. 
I should know. Um, bonds come in three flavors, individual, street, and city. Okay. And they're just power levels. I think they're largely self-explanatory. Interesting. So individuals like, uh, are like a friend. Yeah. Uh, individual is, I know a guy. Street is, I know an organization. And city is, I know a big organization. Nice. Very cool. And like, there will be like a face on a city or street level uh, bond, but it has much more sway than just some guy. Mm-hmm. Part of a, a, a sizable part of the campaign is accruing uh, individual and street level bonds and basically pushing them together until they become city level bonds and you can just throw them off against your enemies and you can sit at home drinking tea. <laughs> Which is much safer. Now, um, the other thing about bonds is I get to pick. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll read the text. You have a bond with another one of the one of the one of the PCs. You and them used to go drinking and still do on occasion. Describe the wildest thing you two got up got, got up to on one of your legendary nights out. Oh. <laughs> now, um, I don't know much about the Carrion Priest so far, but I'm pretty sure my character fancies your character, Ryan. <laughs> 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 what's what's the carrion priest like? Tell me a little bit about them. Um, oh, I have to resist my urge to just like be snarky and grumpy. <laughs> She's like always my character type. Um, you could be like a Jehovah's Witness, but for the god of death. Oh my god, I love that so much. <laughs> Hello, my yeah, friend. I talk like, to you for a second super, about crows, but like super peppy about it. Yeah, like like like, like super into it. Hi, hi. This is my hyena. Right, like well, putting, all, putting to work all of those things that I learned as a personal assistant. Yeah, oh, that's um, nice. Yes. Like, I think yeah. if, if spreadsheets existed, you'd definitely have one. Oh, yeah, for sure. This, yeah, but like, but like, you've definitely got like, like, you've got like a day planner. Yeah. Uh, which has a load of like gore covered feathers in it to mark the, to mark the important days. <laughs> oh, yeah. And definitely like all of the pamphlets are maybe sticky for some reason. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I had them printed by this guy I know. Just don't, don't ask him any questions. Don't it's worry fine. about it. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's all fine. It's, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Okay. Um, I think then, I think definitely the bound for that one then. Um, you see, uh, I think uh, the the bound that I used to go drinking and the wildest thing we got, we got up to one of our legendary nights out is we... The a, a local dignitary from the desert kingdom of Alakam was visiting, and we stole their goat. Nice. I'm all for some good old fashioned goat stealing. And we rode it around. The goats <laughs> in Alakam come very big. Um, ah. uh, it was uh, th- there is uh, actually so um, Ryan, I don't you, you won't have noticed this. Appendix four, I believe, is a list of of, of um, suspected goats in Spire. Oh. Um, so we, we, we kidnapped the Capriticon from a visiting Alakami dignitary and rode it around and then put a straw hat on it and gave it back. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Serious dark game of rebellion. Spies. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, you, you gotta, you gotta lighten up every now and then. Yeah, otherwise. for sure, for sure. And that's the thing, like, it, it, ma- it makes the, uh, it, it makes the bit where your brother-in-law tries to sell you out to the police much more impactful. Mm-hmm. If you just, if you just got done, if you just got done dancing with a goat. God, I love goats. God, I just, yeah, I feel I like just, that's coming through right now. God, I just, I just love them. Why? Just, they're, what? They're, what about goats? They're perfect little angels. I feel like thing. they're kind of mean. Well, okay, yeah. I mean, they're not nice, <laughs> but they have they have lovely little horns, and they've got cool, weird eyes, and they're very intelligent. They climb stuff, and they don't brook no crud from no one. And I like that. <laughs> they um, they're cheeky, and I have a lot of time for them. Yeah, All right, I'll allow it. And they taste pretty good as well. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. Like so, like, don't, if don't they turn out to be real jerks, you can always yeah. just eat them. Stick them in a curry. In fact, we have a um, we have one of our prestige classes in Black Magic. Um, several of the of the abilities focus around making increasingly good curry goat until it gets so good you can bring people back from the dead. That's not that is, a joke. That is a <laughs> very powerful <laughs> dish. It's a powerful stew. Wow. Um... So I think that's everything I need to do for my character. I'm so done. One of my so my PC bond mm-hmm. is that I helped someone deal with a death either by helping them through the grieving process or no someone helped hold on. I think it's you helped them. Yes, okay. I'm trying to like read it and talk into the microphone at the same time. Um so you helped someone deal with a death either through the grieving process or by disposing of a body, <laughs> which are like equally helpful things that all of your friends should do. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to decide. Ryan probably has a lot of bodies to dispose of. Mm-hmm. 
but like a few, probably yeah. already knows how to do that. I feel like that's part yeah. of your job. Mm-hmm. I kind of like the idea that you're the most organized person I know. And I was like, oh my God, he's dead. I need to call yes. someone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was supposed to bring him in, but no, no. <laughs> you know what? Don't worry about it. We're going to fix this. It's going to be great. <laughs> Now, here, here's some hessian sacks and some hacksaws. Everything's going to be just fine. Do you know where pigs are? <laughs> <laughs> we need a lot of pigs. Oh, I like your character already. That's great. Mm-hmm. Oh, have, have you picked out names, by the way, for your characters? Um, I have a name for my character. Uh, first name only, because I'm not sure the what, what sort of last names to go with. Uh, but uh, she is Sylvia. Sylvia. Um, I am very much in the. Um, I'm. I'm in support of the idea of just not giving people last names and working it out. There you go. Or just using or just using nouns. Kind of makes sense in this sort of game, in this sort of uh, setting, that um, you're more bound by your class instead of family. Yeah, for sure. Um, my name is Jean Jacques. Drink the sunrise. Um, I had my original drow name taken off me when I joined the military. Uh, and my lieutenant, a, an Elphir by the name of s- Someone Drink the Sunrise, insisted that all of his sergeants had his surname because they're his boys now. <laughs> um, and so my 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 surname was was forcibly removed from me, and now I go by Drink the Sunrise. Oh wow! I love Elphir names. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's like a little haiku and a and little clue about how some, evil they are. <laughs> like some really dumb ones out there. Like I'm trying to remember what it was. Like something about socks. I can't okay. remember what it was, though. That's, that's not canon. No. <laughs> no, but it was very good. Someone <laughs> did build a an Elfian name generator and put it up on the Discord. Oh, nice. And it did not work. Bless their hearts. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am going to pick my grandma's name. I'm sorry, Grandma. Um, actually, my Nana. I'm going to go with Claudette. Nice. Oh. I'm going to pick my grandma's name, Slam Master. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to be fair, my Nana was nuts. Mm, like, okay. she was real crazy. So it feels correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Um, and I picked my bond uh, to an NPC. And uh, this NPC's name is Fiona. And she values most her pet cat, Muffles. Oh. Oh, adorable. Mm-hmm. Oh, that- I'm not the gym, but I can't wait to take it away. Ah! I was gonna say, I hope my hyena doesn't eat it. <laughs> oh no! It's a big cat. We're gonna have to get a similar cat. <laughs> uh, what's your What's your PC bond? PC bond. Uh, you have a bond with one of the other PCs who you rescued from a dangerous situation. Describe the situation they found themselves in. Oh, I almost want to pick um, probably Amelia's character. Okay, that works. I can see that working. Okay, so. We've got um, this fanatic of the god of death. Fanatic is a strong word. Okay. Enthusiast. I would say devout. Devout. Okay. Devout of the god of death. Um, Very chipper about it. What what if um, you were in a situation where you were going through your pitch with with some people and... Just going door to door. Door to door to door. And you happened upon a residence that was, how you say Not enthusiastic about what I had to say? Well, I would say in the middle of criminal activity of (gasps) sorts. Oh, Oh, no. I like it. And I saw you get pulled in because you were basically a witness. And that's when I came in and took care of them for you. Were you already in there because you were in the middle of infiltrating whatever it was? Yes. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yes. It so was I like, s- like you'd been you'd been tracking down these drug dealers for months. Yeah. <laughs> and then you just and then me and those characters happened to find their secret hideout. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And then the Jehovah's Witness of Death is at the door. <laughs> I like that. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I basically saw them take you in, and they were gonna rough you up and or kill you. And uh, intervened with uh, my ropes and my dagger. Perfect. I'm Probably. going to intervene with my dagger, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> intervene right into Absolutely your Absolutely perfect. I love it. And what was your character's name again? Who's mine? Yours. Mm-hmm. Claudette. Claudette. Yeah, and Bound. What's your, what's your character's name? Uh, Sylvia. Sylvia. With a Y? Um, S-I-L-V-I-A. Mm-hmm. Let me see. 
S Y L V I A. What, what I wrote there was Sivlia, which is nowhere near. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with Sylvia. a Y for the first, uh, first time. Very good. Sylvia. Sylvia, this one time we got blind drunk and stole an important goat. <laughs> cool. Is that us? I believe it, that's us. I think that we did it. Fantastic. So, how did we... Uh, now, this is the part where we go a little bit beyond the normal character creation portion of the game and mm-hmm. create a little bit more background as if there was mm-hmm. where, like a full session zero uh, sort of game. Mm-hmm. How did... So, I think... Because really, the premise of this is that we're all doing something for the ministry. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're so, all part of the same cell, right? So, what are we doing? I think is really like, what are we doing that the three of us would be a good team? Mm-hmm. So, if I was if I was pitching this, if if I was running this as a GM, the antagonists I'd have would be a nihilistic death cult is being armed by mysterious shadowy benefactors. Um, and so, like, there's guns being sent down Spire, and they're rising up through Red Row, and so you're getting, like, um, um, various attacks and various uh, weird markings scrawled on walls, and the Ministry have tasked us with working out what the Jeff is going on. And so I can see, um, like, actions happening in the uh, in, in Red Row, which is the criminal underworld, in the North Docks, which is where I hang out with all the pubs, mm-hmm. um, and... Uh, you two are on top of the city with the bound and the carrion priest. Like your home turf is right at the top. Okay. So I could like either we transfer your religion and like and like we 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 have like a, a church of the bound and a church of the de- death god down down in the lower lower end of the spire. Or for some reason, there's something happening at the top which is luring us in. Like some some kind of. Oh. I feel like it makes more sense for us to move down. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. So, uh have you got some sort of like charnel pit? What's your what's your um down spire death cult like? Um yeah, I mean I feel like they're probably a more extreme, more um <laughs> let's say more evangelical sect. They got, sect they, they, they of got this. kicked out for being too into death. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're like a little too intense about it. Okay. Uh, and the bound are, of course, like they they police perch, mm-hmm. but they are like they're not legally allowed to police perch. So they can they can illegally police wherever they want, and you can vigilante wherever you mm-hmm. wherever you desire. There's a there's a there's definitely a high call for bound all over the city, so you can travel where you'd need to go. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, and, and if if your thing is assassinating people who are less than reputable, this is mm-hmm. the place to find them. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's kind of where I I, I turned. I, I used to assassinate people that didn't exactly deserve it, and mm-hmm. now I want to turn that on its head and assassinate people of my choice. Nice. Okay, I like that. And so, in terms of NPCs, I'm seeing like a like a charismatic preacher for a nihilistic death cult, um, which also gives us like the 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 great opportunity to have one of us die get visited by the god of nihilistic death and and and, and come back turned which is always fun <laughs> um and it would give um it would give amelia's character a like something to rub against in terms of not death but like um this called worship of the hungry deep and so not just like not a glorious death living forever in charnel's belly but um just utter nothingness and if imagine if, if all existence was a god speedy black emperor album that's no. kind of where they're at. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, thank you. Um, so this some, is really some, good. Some sort of charismatic death preacher. We've got, um, I'm seeing uh, like an Elphir, maybe like a, like a have a go Elphir crime lord who's coming down and sort of having a go at it. And so it's him who's sort of funding. And and, and like one thing which I'm always interested in doing is getting players to ally with the Elphir. Mm-hmm. For some reason, because that's that's always a fun one to try and negotiate. So we'd have them working there. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like maybe there's some kind of crime lord or something that is mm-hmm. um, really just what's what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't know, just like particularly awful. Okay, that, you know, egregious. That we would, mm-hmm. Right there, you go. Um, that we would need Elphir help to do yeah. something about because, yeah. like, it, we just do not have the resources. Yeah. 
Okay. I kind of want to say that my individual bond Mm -hmm. is somebody that my character is fond of. Yeah, and that's that why she, that's why she's down here to clean up the streets to help make it a safer place for Fiona. Ah, uh, okay, cool. I like that. That's nice. So, like, uh, like a like a sister? Um, no, a lover, a girlfriend. Yeah, closer, closer to that. Okay. Um, somebody that she really wants to have that sort of relationship with. <gasps> Ah, but no. unrequited. Yes, uh, either I unrequited killed all these gangsters or, for you. I think secret. Oh. I think she is ashamed of her past and mm. wants to clean it up before nice. she um, initiates anything there. By doing oh, more cool. murder? <laughs> Murdering bad people. Oh, okay. I like I like the idea that there's some sort of big murder in your past you did you're not you're super not proud of uh-huh. and like five people know about it. Yes. And and you're and you're and you're sort of, sort of slowly tracking them down and making it so they can't tell anyone. Yeah. Oh, I like that. <gasps> you have a list. Ooh, yeah. I, I like and that. They're connected to Fiona in some way. Uh-oh. Oh no. Oh. Yes, one of them was like definitely her mom. What? <laughs> <laughs> hmm Oh, I like that. And then because this is a person that you're close to, definitely that person's gonna die. Oh, oh Hondo P. Hondo and then. P. I get to bring them back from the dead. Hey, that's fine. Uh, uh, as a ghost, close enough. Yeah, so, yeah, did, something. Yeah. You know what? I did my best. Yeah, that's, you know, it's, it's better than nothing, right? <laughs> well, and you know what? Sometimes that is just the will of the universe <laughs> of this horrible death god. Charnel. That's amazing. Charnel. Yeah. Uh, I like that. Okay. Um, I'd be interested in maybe throwing some cannibals in there. Because that's also an, an, another fun un, an underground thing to have, rather <laughs> well, than just I, having... Yeah, on. so I have a street-level bond with three, like, followers. Mm. Um, so these are similarly fanatical people. Probably they eat people. Yeah, okay. I would assume. But, like, people who wanted to be eaten in an ancestor worship way, or people who happened to die? Hmm. Which one's creepier? Probably the first. <laughs> like, 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 grandma dies, then we all eat grandma, rather than, I've hunted down this prey. That is disturbing. I will fe- feast on its strength. Yeah, I think, and like, and like I, you, like you boil grandma into a stew. I think ritualistically eating your dead family members is probably creepier than hunting somebody down and eating them that you don't know. Well, I it's don't all- make fun of your religious practices. <laughs> <laughs> it's also like it's creepy, but it's also like weirdly. It's gonna sound weird. Comforting. It no, safe? it's weirdly yeah. sweet. No, no, isn't no. no it? I get it's that. It's like yeah. tradition. Like it's like oh, this is our family tradition. Yeah, yeah. We're just gonna eat grandma. And then like you have a piece of grandma with you. Yeah, for for, for, for eight to twelve days. hours. Like, for like yep. eight to twelve hours. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a couple days. Depending on how soon you drink coffee. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is very good. I'm very proud of us. <laughs> I like that. We've got um, so we've got hungry di- we've got hungry deep cultists who have weird rust magic and like moths crawling out of their mouths and eyes. We've got a an, a horrible crime lord uh, who we have to ally with, uh, like some sort of new money elfir who's come down. Uh, we've got I want. Oh I want no! The- are they trying to elfir gentrify our neighborhood? Yeah. Oh, I like that. Um, yeah, so like, there's there's like a bit of Red Row. I think Red Row could work quite well for us, actually. So it's kind of like yeah. um, crime, cr- crime town. Um, crime town. Mm-hmm. And so like, there's a bit of crime town where like everything's getting really boringly safe and, and like super expensive. So expensive, and barely anyone gets murdered. And like, anymore. why are there all these vegan restaurants? Yeah, and it, like this, this place sells artisanal mayonnaise. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, this is very good. This is, yeah, okay. that works. Yeah, so so, so like, so like as a side plot, as a side plot, we, we've got fight against elf gentrification of Crime Town on one side, and then mad-eyed cultists and uh, uh, allying with cannibals rising up from the deeps, <laughs> and we have to try and um, stop it all from happening. I suppose we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. Like try and try and get Red Row on the side, stop the gentrification, and stop whatever the hungry deep want to do by just eating all of Spire. <laughs> Blowing it up in a series of void bombs. This is perfect. Yeah. Cool. Wait, no, it's demonology. Carry on. It's a demonological incursion. That's what they're building up to, because I like those. Ooh, perfect. Yeah, I like that. All right. Groovy. So I think we did it. Okay. We did it. We've got some pretty amazing characters. This is awesome. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's fun. 
It's a, it's a shame we won't be playing. I know. <laughs> oh. I always think, like, I always keep thinking, like, at some point, like, let's hold on to these. Maybe as bonus content, at some point, we'll play this game. <laughs> we probably won't. I don't have no, time. But... No, it's, it's, uh, but, like, like, look, look, we've, like, we, I think in whatever campaign we just imagined in, in our heads is going to be far more beautiful than any sort of dirty real campaign we actually did. Mm-hmm. That's let's true. Just, because... Let's just enjoy the fantasy. Exactly. <laughs> Much and like we have to all suffer the people none of killed. the consequences. Yes. And that's why we love this. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us for our Spire character creation episodes. Grant, do you want to go ahead and remind people where they can find you online? You can find me primarily at G.S. Howitt. That's G-S-H-O-W-I-T-T on Twitter. Uh, and if you go to rowanrookanddeckard.com, which is our hard-to-spell website, uh, Deckard with no K, uh, that is our official business website. So you can download all of our games for there, and most of our games are free. Nice, which is nice of us. Uh, and if you want to hear me, and in fact, actually, uh, if you want to, if you want to read ancient articles I wrote about role playing, uh, including like how to be a better player and stuff, uh, lookrobot.com is my uh, is my old old website. But I've got a lot of articles in there about GMing and um, player advice and how to build campaigns and stuff. Nice. And you will have an upcoming or just released Kickstarter when this comes out. Hopefully. Oh yeah, that's why I'm here. I right. remember now. Uh, <laughs> yes. So if you if you go to um, if you go to Kickstarter and search Strata Spire or Spire Strata or some combination of those words, uh, hopefully you should get to us if our SEO works uh, and you'll be able to back. We have all sorts of cool things like the the one thing I want to shill right now. Uh, in addition to the source book. Uh, the chap uh, who did our newspaper clippings last time, a guy called Tim Wilkinson Lewis, is doing as a full twelve-page paper, uh, which is uh, purchasable as an add-on, and it's it designed as an accessory to the book. So it has hooks for every single one of the campaigns which we which we have in the book. So you can hand it out at any point when you're playing a game out of Strata. It should have something which could connect them together and give them hooks and stuff. And he's an excellent writer and very funny. Nice. So I'm looking forward to that. That should be awesome. Mm-hmm. And we'll mm-hmm. put a link to it in our show notes when these much. episodes come out. So everybody can find it. I'm sure we'll tweet about it too. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to everyone for listening. And join us for our next episode where we discuss this process. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts and guests, or even some of our character sheets. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used in today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you like the systems discussed and wish to purchase them, links to the product can be found in the show notes. Also, check the notes or the website for cool stuff to go with each character, such as dice or mixtapes. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation, so go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you will find other great shows like Warda. Warda is an original fantasy actual play podcast created by Ali Grauer and Drew Marzieski. It's one part Game of Thrones, two parts Downton Abbey served on the rocks with a twist of Agatha Christie. Discover magic, mystery, and more than a little sociopolitical commentary along the way. The city holds thousands of stories. What will yours be?